For notes tonight, we're going to be talking about coordinate geometry. So basically, if I'm given four points in the coordinate plane, I'm going to be able to use two steps to determine whether it's a rectangle, a rhombus, a square, or just a regular parallelogram. Okay, so we're determining whether it's a parallelogram Is it a specific parale parallelogram, like a rectangle? Is it a rhombus? Or is it a square? And we're going to follow two steps to find it, okay? So um, remember, parallelograms have two pairs of congruent sides. Rectangles also have two pairs of congruent sides, but rhombuses and squares have four pairs. I'm sorry. Yeah, they have all four uh, sides are congruent. Okay, so it only has one side length and all four sides are congruent. And then it's also true about diagonals. So to figure out whether it's a parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, or square, we're going to, one, we're going to check the congruency of the sides. So check the congruency check the congruency of the sides and then two we're going to check the congruency of the diagonals Okay, so there's four different cases, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, and square. So here's what we're looking for, okay? If I have a parallelogram, so let's write that out, parallelogram. If I have a parallelogram, then I know that the opposite sides are congruent, but the diagonals are not congruent. So opposite sides are congruent. We can just abbreviate with the congruency side. But um, diagonals are not congruent. So diagonals are not congruent. They're not necessarily congruent. So in a parallelogram, I've got opposite sides congruent. So those guys are congruent to those, those are congruent to those, but the diagonals are not necessarily congruent. Okay. Case two, what if it's a rectangle? So if something's a rectangle, then yeah, their opposite sides are congruent. Opposite sides are congruent. and their diagonals are also congruent. Diagonals are congruent. So for rectangle, congruent, 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 and then these two are also going to be congruent. So I'm just going to highlight them so we can see that. That is going to be the same as that. Awesome. All right, case three, what if it's a square? Well, a square is not only going to have opposite sides that are congruent, but all four sides are congruent. All four sides are congruent. And then if it's a square, the diagonals are also congruent. Diagonals are congruent. So for a square, all four sides are the exact same length, and the diagonals are going to be exactly the same. Right. And last classification, rhombus. Probably should have written rhombus first, but oh well, doesn't matter. Rhombus. Okay. So a rhombus, just like the square, all four sides are congruent. 
all four sides are congruent. But the diagonals are not congruent. So a rhombus might look something like this, where I've got four congruent sides, but my diagonals are totally different lengths. So I could see that with colors. Let's say this is orange and this is green. They're totally different. And so notice, what do these things have in common? Well, the types of ones that diagonals are congruent either a rectangle or square. Well, those both have right four right angles. Parallelogram and rhombus are the ones that do not have congruent diagonals. And those do not have four right angles. So that's just something to think about. All right, so let's go ahead and try and see if one of these um, is a rectangle, parallelogram, square, or rhombus. Here is our first example that we're going to practice with. So we have A, B, C, D. And as always, I want to do a rough graph to just kind of get an idea of where the points are. So I've got coordinate plane. You can always do this on graph paper. It'll look nicer on graph paper. But sometimes I encourage you not to use graph paper because we don't want to assume from the picture that it looks like it's a certain type of figure. You really want to prove these um, by proving like the distance between the sides and the distance of the diagonals. So I'm just going to plot some points roughly. There's A, B, C, and let's see, 2, negative 5, 3, negative 7, D, A, B, C, D. Okay. So my picture, again, it's a rough graph. doesn't have to be perfect. It just gives me an idea of what it looks like. So the steps are always the same. First, check the sides. So we want to prove that opposite sides are congruent. So we're going to find AB. So we'll find AB. We're going to find DC. And we want these to be congruent to each other. Then we'll find AD. And we want that to be congruent to BC. So we're going to use the distance formula for this. So for AB, I've got AB, these two points. So I've got 9 minus 8 squared plus negative 4 plus 2 squared. And let's leave our answers as the square root of a number. So this ends up giving us square root of 5. Okay, we can go ahead and check DC. This is also going to be the square root of 5. So that's great. So that means that AB and DC are congruent. But remember, we need two pairs of congruent sides, not just one pair. So we got to check the other ones. So go ahead and check AD and BC. So check those on your own. And then uh, once you've done that, you can come back and check your answer. So pause the video now. All right, so check your answers. We should have found that AD is the square root of 45 and BC is also the square root of 45. So that means that those are congruent, which is great because now we've proven that opposite sides are congruent. Now we're gonna check the diagonals, diagonals. So if we find that the diagonals are not congruent, it means it's just a parallelogram. But if we find that the diagonals are congruent, then it means it's going to be a rectangle. So our diagonals in this case are AC, so AC, and then BD. Now again, in our picture, it looks like they're probably not congruent, but don't rely on the picture. Even if you did this on a nice piece of graph paper, still test it. doesn't take that long to do the distance formula. Let's go ahead and find AC and BD. So for AC, we get the square root of 50. For BD, let's check that. So 
So we got 5 squared is 25 plus, there we go, square root of 50. Awesome. So this means that the diagonals are congruent. So if we look back here, we see opposite sides are parallel, diagonals are congruent. This means it's a rectangle. So we classify this as a rectangle. So it is technically a parallelogram, but the best definition for it, the best classification, would be a rectangle. So that's how we'd find it. Check the sides, check the diagonals. Okay, I'm going to set up another question, and then you'll do the work on your own, and you can come back and check your answers. Here's number two. So we've got QRST. Here are four points, and I've already gone ahead and done my rough graph. So make sure that when you make yours, you check that. So remember, we're going to check the side lengths. We have to check the lengths of all four sides. And then we have to check the diagonals. So for the side lengths, we're going to check QR, then ST, then so QR, ST, then let's check RS and QT. So you find those distances and check back with me in a minute. All right, check your sides. So we should have found that all four sides are going to be equal to the square root of 13. So this means that it's either going to be a rhombus or a square. So rhombus or square. And the way that we'll figure out whether it's a rhombus or a square is by looking at the diagonals. So now we're going to find QS and RT. RT. Wow. RT. <laughs> okay. And remember, if we find that the diagonals are congruent, then it's going to be a square. If we find that the diagonals are not congruent, then it'll be a rhombus. So check it on your own and then uh, come back and look for the answer. Okay, we should have done our diagonals, QS and RT. QS is going to be 6, RT is 4, so our diagonals are not congruent. That means that it's not a square. This is going to be a rhombus. So we've already done examples 1 and 2. I'm going to post examples 3, 4, and 5. You'll do them on your own and um, record your answers in the Google form. So when you're doing this, you're testing the sides, seeing how many sides are congruent. So is it all four, or is it just two pairs of congruent sides, the opposite sides? And are the diagonals congruent or not? So once you've found that, look back here to determine whether it's a parallelogram, a rectangle, a square, or a rhombus. Here are your three practice questions for the homework. So three is parallelogram JKLM, four is parallelogram uh, w, X, Y, Z, and 5 is D, E, F, G. So do the same process we've been doing and then record your answers in the Google form. Awesome. I'll post a, um, a question, a, a blank space so you can answer any, ask any questions that you have, and I will see you all next class. Have a good night.